What's up? Meditate here? Let's talk about the anatomy of the respiratory system. In this segment, we will be talking about the external nose and the nasal cavity. Alright, so the respiratory system consists of all the organs involved in breathing. These are the nose, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, and the lungs. Our focus is to cover the anatomy of all of the structures you see here, step by step, and we will start by covering the detailed anatomy of the nose and the nasal cavity. So in this video, we will start by covering the external structures of the nose, including its cartilage. Then we will split open the head and try to cover the anatomy of the nasal cavity, where we will be talking about the parts of the nasal cavity, the sinuses, and then talk about the layers of the nasal cavity wall. So let's now start with the external nose. So here you see a side view of the nose. There are actually anatomical names to each of the segments of the external nose, and here each are separated by color. So we have the root of the nose, the radix nasi, then we have the dorsum of the nose, and an apex, and then laterally we have the wings of the nose, or ala nasi, which go around the nostrils. Now, if we would remove the skin and the muscle layers, we will see the cartilage and bone. The nose is actually built up of bone, cartilage, and fat. So the bony part is called the nasal bones, the uh, right and the left nasal bones, and I'll show you another scheme after this. Under the bones, you'll find the lateral nasal cartilage, then there's a major alar cartilage, and the minor alar cartilage. And in between the major alar cartilage and the lateral nasal cartilage, you'll find some accessory nasal cartilages supporting the nose. And straight in the midline, you'll find the septal nasal cartilage. Now, let's do that again, but this time in a better model. And let's zoom in to keep our focus on this. We have two nasal bones. One, two. Then we have the lateral nasal cartilage, there's the major alar cartilage, and the minor alar cartilage, and in between the major alar cartilage and the lateral cartilage, you will find some accessory nasal cartilages supporting the nose. And straight in the middle, you will find the septal nasal cartilage, which divides the nose. The rest of the nose is called alar fibro fatty tissue, which aids by giving the nasal wings more flexibility. Now let's remove all of this and look at it from a side view to talk a little bit more about the nasal septum, as you see here. So the nasal septum is here, and it consists of cartilaginous part and a bony part, and they reach all the way to the back of the nasal cavity until they reach the beginning of the pharynx. The cartilaginous part is a little more flexible than the bony part, which is essentially good because it gives the nose a little more flexibility without breaking. Now let's take the skull, split it in half, and look at it from a side view, we will see this. Now let's continue with the anatomy of the nasal cavity. Here is the nasal cavity, situated in front of the pharynx and above the heart palate. Under here, you will find the oral cavity. So the nasal cavity is divided into two parts. There is the nasal vestibule, as the nostrils, and there is the nasal cavity proper. What separates these two? Well, there's a ridge on the mucosa of the nasal cavity called the nasal limen or limen nasi, which is generally used as a landmark to separate these two parts. Now again, the area just inside the nostrils, the nasal vestibule, is supported by the cartilage of the nose and lined by tissue that contains hair. So the hair you see in your nostrils are only found in the nasal vestibule. Then the rest of the nasal cavity, which is the nasal cavity proper, doesn't have any hair. It's lined by mucosa. So let's talk about the nasal cavity proper a little bit. The nasal cavity proper is also divided into two parts, since their function differ. We divide it into the olfactory part for smell and the respiratory part for breathing. Let's cover these two parts, starting with the olfactory part. The main reason why the olfactory part is able to sense smell is thanks to your first cranial nerve that reaches out towards it. It has a olfactory tract and an olfactory bulb. And from the olfactory bulb, there's going to be numerous nerves coming down, piercing through the ethmoidal bone, which are fibers from the olfactory nerve. And if we take a small section and zoom in a little bit, you will be able to see how the nerves reach down towards the nasal mucosa. There's going to be epithelial cells supporting the neurons as they reach down with their olfactory receptors as well. Pretty cool process, right? Now the respiratory part differs a little bit, so let's go ahead and talk about that. 
The first thing you will notice when you look at the respiratory part are these bumps on the nasal mucosa and these are called the conche or turbinates. We have the superior conche, middle conche and inferior conche and in between them we have something called meatosis which are spaces that have openings for the sinuses. There's the superior meatus between the superior and the middle conche, there's the middle meatus and there's the inferior meatus underneath the inferior conche. And above the superior conche, right at the junction between the sphenoid bone and the ethmoidal bone, there's a recess called the sphenoethmoidal recess. And here's an anterior view of the nasal cavity, just to give you a different view of these uh, structures. Here's the superior conche, the middle conche, and the inferior conche. And in between them, there's the superior meatus, middle meatus, and inferior meatus. And at the top here, you'll find the sphenoethmoidal recess. Now, why is this relevant? Well, here's one of the sinuses we have, the sphenoid sinus. It has a tube that opens straight into the sphenoethmoidal recess. In the front here, we have the frontal sinus, which open into the middle meatus, as you see here. Then, in between the sphenoid and the frontal bone, there's the ethmoidal sinus. The ethmoidal bone is a little different in that this sinus has numerous walls within the sinus, making air compartments called the ethmoidal air cells. So the ethmoidal air cells are numerous thin wall cavities and they're generally divided into the anterior ethmoidal air cell, middle ethmoidal air cells and the posterior ethmoidal air cells. The posterior ethmoidal air cells will open into the superior meatus, while the anterior and the middle ethmoidal air cells will open into the middle meatus. So again, posterior ethmoidal air cells into the superior meatus and anterior and middle into the middle meatus. Now, if you look at the anterior view of the sinuses, you will see another sinus which are not visible in the lateral view. And this one is the maxillary sinus, which drains into the middle meatus, as you see here. Now, why do we have these sinuses? Well, your skull is pretty heavy. And since these sinuses are relative cavities, they are thought to decrease the relative mass of the skull, as well as help resonating the sound as you speak. And since they are lined with mucus, with a lot of blood, they will also help warm up the air and humidify it as it goes uh, further down the respiratory system. Lastly, and one of the very most important functions of the sinuses, is to produce mucus to keep the nose from drying out. Now there is one more structure that opens into the nasal cavity and that's the lacrimal duct or the nasolacrimal duct which leads the tears from the eyes down to the inferior meatus as you see here. Now let's talk about the nasal mucosa or the walls of the nasal cavity. Let's take one section from up here and one section from down here. This is called the olfactory part and this is called the respiratory part. So I'm not going to go into too much detail into the histology of them but you need to understand some basic principles in order to get the uh, full anatomy of the nasal cavity. So both parts have a tunica mucosa, but the respiratory part have a so-called respiratory epithelium, which consists of pseudostratified columnar epithelia, which have a numerous amount of cilia on them to catch any type of irritants in the air and trap them so that you can sneeze them out. In between the epithelium, you will find goblet cells that produce lubricating mucus on the surface, and in the tela submucosa, you'll find numerous mucus glands, which are mixed type of mucus glands that produce mucus. The olfactory part also have tunica mucosa, but here it's lined by olfactory epithelium, which consists of olfactory cells, which are um, bipolar neurons with receptors for smell. Between these neurons, there are supporting cells called sustentacular cells, which are tall columnar epithelium that provide support. You've probably heard by now that the novel coronavirus may lead to loss of smell, and that is because the COVID-19 may damage these supporting cells, the sustentacular cells. Um, this just shows how important the sustentacular cells are to our olfactory nerves. Other cells you will find in the olfactory mucosa are basal cells, which are essentially stem cells to replace the olfactory and the sustentacular cells if they get destroyed. And on the top here, there's the olfactory cilia that the olfactory cells give off containing receptors. In the tela submucosa, there are olfactory glands, or also called Bowman's glands, which also produce mucus. 
So as you see, each part of the nasal cavity has their own specific function in respiration, smelling and even defense against any unwanted particles. Although sometimes certain conditions may lead to excessive inflammation and swelling of the nasal and the sinus mucosa, leading to an increased secretion of mucus, which uh, may block the sinuses as you see here. These conditions may be caused by, you know, common cold or certain allergies, where in this case, certain allergens like pollen may cause a hypersensitivity response to cause swelling in the mucosa. Another causes could be nasal polyps, which may block the outflow of the mucus from the sinuses, leading to an inflammation and sinusitis. Or even other less common conditions like a deviated septum, meaning the septum of the nose is a little deviated, leading to an increased chance of blocking the sinuses. There are of course many other reasons for this, but this gives you a little bit of understanding in regards to why it's so important to know the uh, meatuses and where they open up to. So that was everything I had regarding the nasal anatomy. If you find this video helpful, please put a like, share, comment, whatever you find convenient to you. The next video will be about the anatomy of the larynx.